Senator Singh. Thank you, Mr. President. My question is to the Attorney General, Senator Brandis. I refer to the Attorney General's decision to weaken the Racial Discrimination Act. Can the Attorney General confirm that representatives of the Institute of Public Affairs provided a briefing to coalition members prior to the Attorney General's announcement yesterday? And can the Attorney General also confirm the IPA gave the government's draft legislation a glowing review while the Prime Minister is yet to name a single ethnic or community organisation who supports it? The Attorney General, Senator Brandis. Well, thank you very much, um, Senator Singh, for your question. And might I remind you, Senator Singh, that there is a fundamental difference between those on your side of the chamber and those on my side of the chamber and those on my side of the Come in, come in, Spinner, come in, Spinner. And those on my Senator Brandis. Now, when when there is silence, when there is silence, I will call Senator Brandis. I need to hear Senator Brandis's answer. Senator Brandis. Thank you, Mr. President. There is a fundamental difference in approach between those on your side of the chamber, Senator Singh, and those on my side of the chamber when it comes to this issue. Because, Senator Singh, you are the party of political censorship, and we are the party of tolerance. We are the party of tolerance. Senator Brandis, resume your seat. When there is silence on my left, when there's silence on my left, we will proceed. Senator Brandis, continue. And might, I, and might I say, Mr President, something that those on Senator Singh's side of the chamber never seem to be able to grasp, that if you are the party of tolerance, if you believe in tolerance, you have to tolerate listening to the views of those whose views you may find offensive or disgusting, but you don't politically censor them. You don't politically censor them. Now, Senator, Order. Now, Order. Order. Order on both sides. On both sides. On both sides. On both sides, order. When there's silence on both sides, I'll call Senator Brandis. He's entitled to be heard in silence from both sides. Senator Brandis. Now, Mr President, coming more immediately to Senator Singh's question about the Institute of Public Affairs, I can tell you, Senator Singh, that I had a cup of tea with the chairman of the Institute of Public Affairs, the very, the very distinguished former senator, emeritus Senator Rod Kemp, in my chambers only an hour ago. <laughs> only an hour ago. And I'm pleased to tell, and I'm pleased Sen to tell senator you Brandis, that Senator Kemp senator is Brandis, very just good resume form. your seat. That is completely disorderly. Now, on my left, when there is silence, we will proceed. We will proceed. Order. 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 No. When. When there's silence, Senator Brandis will be given the call. You know that. Senator Brandis, continue. And those who remember him fondly, as Senator Conroy, I know, does, will be pleased to know that <laughs> Senator Kemp is in rude good health. Order. Uh, rude good Order. health. But Order. I can also tell Order, you. Order, Senator Brandis. Resume your seat as Senator Moore has risen to her feet. Thank Senator you, Mr. Moore. President. My point of order is on relevance, and I am really pleased to hear that Senator Kemp is in good health. But in terms of process, it's about a briefing to the coalition members from the IPA and issues of response. We have not got to that question out yet. Order. I, I, I believe uh, the minister needs to come back to the question and address the question. The minister still has 15 seconds remaining. The minister. Can I start? Order. <laughs> Order. Sen Senator Brandis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr President. Um, I am aware that um, um, uh, officers of the IPA did have a briefing with the Government Backbench Committee on Monday evening. I did not attend that briefing and, in fact, I myself had no meetings with the IPA prior to Tuesday Order. when the matter went to the Order. party room. Senator Singh. What about Andrew 
Mr. President, I refer to the Attorney General's proposed get out clause for his new racial vilification and intimidation provisions. Is Chris Berg from the Institute of Public Affairs correct when he says the new exemptions make clear the fundamental importance of free discussion in any matter of public interest, no matter how extreme that discussion is? The Minister. Um, Mr President, I haven't actually read Mr Berg's remarks. I haven't read Mr Berg's remarks, but I do know Mr Berg, and I know Mr Berg to be a person like all of us on this side of the chamber who understands that in a free country, in a free country, the way to deal with social problems is not through political censorship. And Senator, and Senator Singh, Senator Singh, I, am, I accept your good faith on this issue. I, I understand that you are as profoundly committed, as profoundly committed to opposing racism as every other member of this chamber. But the best way in which to deal with a social problem is to focus on the core vice, that is racial vilification, which our amendments do for the first time, and not try to deal with it through political censorship, which is the way Section 18C has operated hitherto. Senator Singh. Senator Singh. Senator Singh's got the call. Senator Singh. Mr President, thank you. Why is the Attorney General taking advice from conservative think tanks instead of listening, instead of listening to more than 150 ethnic and community organisations who all oppose the repeal of Section 18C? It is because he'd rather be, is it because he'd rather be the first law officer for vested interests instead of the first law officer for Australia? Order. Order. When there's silence, when there's silence on my left, we will proceed. Order. Senator Brandis. Well, Senator Singh, you can do better than that. You really can do better than that. Um, in fact, as I said in answer to the prior, oh, yes, you can, Senator Fifield. Don't be so unkind. You're being unchivalrous, um, Senator. Um, Mr. President. Um, as I said in my answer to the primary question, in fact, I had no meetings with anyone from the IPA or, for that matter, with representatives of any conservative think tank from the start of the consultation process shortly after the federal election until I took a submission to Cabinet on Monday evening. I did, however, uh, Senator Singh, have numerous meetings with a variety of representatives of different ethnic community groups several meetings who have been good enough to acknowledge the exhaustive exhaustiveness of the process of consultation which I undertook. That process of consultation continues with the publication of an exposure draft to which all members of the community, including you, Senator Singh, Order, are welcome your to contribute. Time has expired.